Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool amateur repair time video for you this evening. If uh, you're a fan of our channel, you know that we do arcade game, pinball, and jukebox repair videos. Uh, part of that is because of our love of all things old, especially the electronics and stuff. So we love old coin-operated equipment, but on the weekends, I've been doing these little videos where I work on some of the other stuff that I collect and find interesting. So radios, clocks, things like that. So, the title of this video, Should I Just Throw This Thing Away? I wanted to talk about that a little bit, and then we'll decide. Okay, so this is a CD radio tape player by AudioVox. Um, and the tape player doesn't work right. So, this is the type of stuff that I'm really not interested in collecting at all. So it's a little more modern. It's probably only 10 years old or so, maybe 15 years old. Just looking at the kind of style of it. Kind of looks 2005-ish, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, so where did I get this? I bought it at an auction. So you might think, well, why did you buy it at an auction if you don't even want to collect stuff like that? It's because the way the auction was set up, they weren't selling just that. They were selling four radios at the same time. So they were selling that one, which is probably from 2005-ish, I would guess, right? It was somebody's estate sale or something. And then they were also selling this one. So that's a Sony, a little nicer brand. I kind of like it, but it's also going to be like made in China or something, made in Taiwan. And it's probably from 2000 or so. It's not that old either. Made in China. So to be honest with you, that's not really what I want to collect either. Okay, so why did I buy both of those? <laughs> it's because that wasn't the only, the only radios that they were selling. I had to buy more. I couldn't buy just the one that I wanted, right? So they were also selling this. Oh, well, now we're kind of talking. So this is a Panasonic. I like Panasonic, and it's a flip clock radio, right? So the little numbers flip over. Well, in case you, you're not up with all of the coolness, I am, obviously. In case you're not up with all of the coolness, this is considered very cool now, the little flip clocks, right? So this here actually may be worth some money. So this is a little older. This would be from the 80s, right? So we got 2005, 2000. This is probably 80s. Um... Panasonic, made in Japan. Oh, uh-huh. Well, this actually is something I would collect. This is something that, that I would find very cool. But to be honest, that's not even why I bid on it. You know which is the one that I really wanted? I wanted this one. There were four all together, and this is the one I wanted. It's just a little General Electric solid-state radio. It has a Winston Cup NASCAR sticker on the side. Okay, this one's probably from the 70s, maybe even the late 60s, but probably 70s. So all four of them came together, and it was out of an estate. So you can almost see where they bought new radios <laughs> as time went on, right? By the way, the, the, uh, the tape player has a tape in it. We'll look at that here in a minute. Okay, so should I just throw that thing away? To me, that has no value. To me, uh, you know, it does have a little bit of value, I guess to somebody, but to me, it has no value. I don't want it at all. I wouldn't pay a dollar for it. If I saw it somewhere for a dollar, I would not buy it. But here's the thing. This is made in China, undoubtedly. And to me, it's no good. Okay, but this one's a little bit older and it's also made in China, but I kind of like this one. If I saw this one somewhere for a dollar or two, I'd probably buy it. This would be a good little radio to work on your car with or something to have it outside. A little Sony radio. It's a decent little radio. Nothing special, but it's a decent little radio. So what's the difference between this one and this one? This one actually plays CDs, plays tapes. You could argue that this is a better radio. This is actually, I'm sure, was a more expensive radio when it came out. So this was probably $20 or $20, you know, $30 maybe. This one was probably 60, 70 bucks, maybe even more 
when it came out because it plays CDs and it plays tapes. Okay, so think about that. The, the more modern one, I don't have any interest in at all and I don't see it as collectible. And I'm thinking, I'm actively thinking about this, right? I don't see that as collectible at all. I would, If somebody wanted to throw that away, I probably wouldn't have that big of a problem with it. If somebody wanted to throw this one away, I would be like, oh, don't throw that away. That's a neat little radio, you know? Okay, now let's go back to the one from the 80s. To me, this is much cooler than that one, right? And part of it's just because it's a little older. And so it would I definitely wouldn't throw this one away. I mean, if you don't know, these ones with the little flip dials, some of them are worth a little bit of money. This is a Japanese-made Panasonic. Pretty cool. To the right person, you might get 50 or 60 bucks out of this radio. As crazy as that sounds, it might be worth 50 or 60 bucks to the right person. Because it has value. People people understand that it's it's something cool. But to be honest, was this one as much as that one when it was new? Probably not. That's probably the better. This one doesn't even play tapes or anything. It's just an alarm clock with a radio built in. And in its day, that would have been a cheap clock. I don't. It's just strange. This is so weird how this works. And then this one very well could have been the cheapest of all of the clocks of all four of these. It was probably you know kind of on par with this. This is a cheap clock. This is just a general electric solid state a clock. General electric solid state radio doesn't really have all that much value uh, whenever it was around. And so I'm I'm saying should we throw this one in the trash cuz it's it, by the way the, the tape player doesn't work. That's why I'm saying should we throw it away. Should we throw that one in the trash? Well, there was a time when people threw these in the trash cuz you know, it's just a cheap little radio. Oh, that thing, you know, something's wrong with it. Trash it. And there was a time when people would throw these in the trash. <laughs> you know, ah, oh, that's an old Japanese radio. I heard somebody the other day, I was talking to them about something, and they said, uh, oh, I think, that's something, I can't even tell if they're the Japanese crap. Like, this was considered crap. Now it's considered the good stuff, you know? And not too long ago, or kind of in the time that we're in now, people are throwing these away for sure. Right, and here I am thinking about throwing this one away. <laughs> so it's just weird how that works, you know. If I throw that away, thirty years from now, is somebody going to be looking for one of those because they remember having it when they were a kid or something? I gotta, I gotta say, part of the reason I like Sony is because I remember Sony being on our TVs and our VCRs and our stereo systems whenever I was a kid. And part of the reason I like Panasonic is because. You know, way back in the 80s, I remember seeing these old flip clocks, and I remember Panasonic being a great, a cool brand. It was kind of what people had. And part of the reason I like this is because it just looks like it's from the 70s. It just looks cool to me, right? So will the day come when people think that's cool? I don't know. So what am I, what am I going to do? Well, let's see if we can fix it. Maybe we won't throw it away. If I can fix it, we'll keep it. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm not going to keep it. I'm not going to keep it. But if I can fix it, we won't throw it in the trash, right? So what am I going to do with it if I can fix it? I'm going to try to sell it. So at our store, if you don't know, we have a store where we sell video games. And um, we've got it all organized and everything. We try to keep it as clean as we can, as organized as we can. But we've got one little section in the back where we've got just kind of random stuff that doesn't fit anywhere else. So we've got one section for all of the handheld games, you know, the Nintendo DS and the Game Boy and the Sony PSP. It's in this showcase up here. All of that's here. And then we got another section where it's like the, the more expensive games for the like the PlayStation or the PlayStation 2. And it's got a bunch of the systems in the case. You know, like the we've got a collectible 360, Xbox 360. And we've got a, you know, a PS3 in there. And we've got uh, an old Atari uh, monitor that we picked up that we did a video about a little while back. And so we've got some of our collectible stuff in there. And then over here on the walls, we've got all the GameCube games in one spot, all the PS2 games in one spot, all that, you know, everything's all organized. Uh, but we have one little spot where we just got all kinds of crap, you know, just different stuff. And we've got a lot of computer games there that I don't, I don't really know too much about computer games. Um, so, you know, I could set this over there and, uh, and sell it. Now, whenever I got these, like I said, these two here, I'm probably not going to keep. Uh, whenever I got these, I took, I had another one like this and I took it to the shop, cleaned it up. Of course it worked great. 
uh, and I put it on the shelf over there in that little area that we're talking about. I put $10 on it. Somebody bought it for 10 bucks. Sat there about three weeks. Somebody bought it. So, you know, I figured out over the years, there's a vulgar way to say this, but there is a customer for every item, right? So the, the, the vulgar way of saying it is there's a butt for every seat, you know? So, you know, they say that on, uh, on, uh, you know, baseball game, you know, they don't say it on the game, but that's how people promoters think, you know, there's a butt for every seat. So any of this kind, you can sell about anything, right? Even, even something like this or like this in my store, I could sell. Now, is it worth all the time and trouble? Not really. So what did I pay for these four radios? $6. It was an auction. They, I bid $6. I won it for $6. Nobody wanted to pay seven. Okay. So I think I did all right. So I took, I had another radio similar to this. I took it to the shop. It worked great. I put $10 on it. I put a little tag. that said, works great! Exclamation mark. Because it did. Right? Somebody, it's after about three weeks, somebody bought it. So I'll probably sell this one, do the same thing. Um, you know, I can't keep all of these. I'm going to end up with too many of them. And I've got a bunch more. This is just some, you know. But this one is sitting around. If I can't fix that tape player, I think I'm just going to throw it away. So hopefully I can fix it. So we're going to see if it's more serviceable or if it's serviceable at all, right? This one, I think I know what's in here. There's going to be a big board with some, or probably a small board, with some transistors on it. Uh, and that's kind of serviceable because I do a lot of through-hole soldering on the pinball machines and arcade games and stuff. So I'm sure I can fix this one. But it's it's not because this is really well built. Okay. This one is probably the best built of the four because it's Japanese. That's probably a decently built little little alarm clock, right? That one might have some uh, integrated circuits and stuff in it, but it probably still works fine. This one probably still works fine. There may be some kind of mechanical problem where it doesn't flip right or something. I don't know. I haven't tested it. But this one, I don't know if this can be fixed, okay? But we're about to find out. So the CD player works and the radio works, but the tape player does not. Let me show you the tape that was in it. Now, remember, I got this from an estate sale. So, you know, let's be respectful, people. It is a tape called The Greatest Generation by Tom Brokaw. Well, Tom Brokaw's reading it. Let's, yeah, it says read by the author. So Tom Brokaw made a tape or a book called The Greatest Generation. And this was 1998 Random House Audio, and it was manufactured in the USA. That's kind of cool. Um, so Random House Audio Books, it's a Tom Brokaw book. Now, if you if you look, see the yellowing there? And you don't see it on this side? That's because that was the tape that was in there. That was the last thing, the, the, you know, the gentleman or the lady that, that had this radio player listen to and you could kind of think i don't know if she had other tape decks in the house but you know this is probably the last tape they listened to now i don't think they listened to it and then died i'm just saying they were listening to this and uh they turned it off and uh they never had a chance to listen to another tape before uh, they passed away or they listened to cds or whatever so that's kind of interesting all right so let me plug it up and i'll show you what it's doing and then we'll see if we can fix it. I have never fixed a tape player, and this is probably a bad one to start with. But it's a good one to start with in the in the uh, idea that I can throw this in the trash if I screw it up too bad. We are plugged up. The radio and the CD work. Let's put it on tape. We're on. <laughs> As America's attitude was toward blacks, Germany's ultimate solution was beyond belief. Okay, I don't know if I really want to hear all that, but uh, that was almost creepy. Um, so whenever I got this, I tested it out by putting a tape in it and just letting it. I thought, well, maybe if I just let it play for like 10 minutes, it'll speed up. No dice. I played it for a while. So then I thought, well, maybe the tape screwed up. So you know what I did? I went and got a good tape. Now, if you don't know, Randy Travis is the man. So let's see what Randy Travis sounds like. 
Maybe it'll, maybe it'll be good. Maybe it's over. Maybe it ate it. Oh no. It must have been the end of that side. Come on. Okay, so obviously it's not uh, playing at the right speed, okay? Um, the, the CD player works fine and the, the radio works fine. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the back off and just see if it's even serviceable. I hope it is. I hope I don't have to throw this thing in the damn trash. I hope... Now, I've never fixed the tape player, but here's what I think is going on. There's one of two things. I'm hoping that there's something in there that I can oil, but I don't think there is. And then there are belts. And so I'm hoping maybe there, the belt has slipped off a cog or something, or there's something that I can just adjust. Because if I need to replace the belt, I don't have any belts. <laughs> uh, so that ain't gonna happen. Um, and the thing, it doesn't have very much value. So I'm not gonna, I'm not really gonna buy any parts for it. And I don't really, you know, we're running a classy shop, people. I'm not selling a damn radio with a broken tape player in it. I'm not, you know, <laughs> now I know I can put a little sign that says the tape player doesn't work. Most people aren't going to want to play tapes anyway, but uh, I'm not going to do that, right? So um, let me take it apart. All right, I took the screws out and I'm unplugging this, which goes there, and then the antenna is soldered on. I'm going to temporarily unsolder that just so I can work on it for a few minutes. Again, we're not going to go crazy on this thing, but. Um, you can see the PCB is actually pretty impressive, but it's got some surface mount stuff that I would never be able to repair if there's a problem. So, um, it doesn't have a super fine pitch though. So, I mean, I, if I knew, if I could see that there was a problem there, I could probably repair it. I'm decent at soldering, but you know, that's not going to be the problem with what we're looking at. I'm, you know, I'm just talking about general serviceability of this thing. That's because I think I'm going to have to take that off next. But let me unsolder that antenna. Okay, so this is interesting. So I took all of those screws out of here. Um, and then there were two screws on a little board up there in front of the tape player. So we are down to the tape player. So my idea of oiling anything, remember I said I didn't think that would be it? I was correct. <laughs> you can't oil plastic. It ain't going to help anything. So this is the motor. See the wires run into it? And so it turns a rubber belt. That rubber belt is just fine. There's a date on the back of this that says 2000. So the belt doesn't seem to be slipping to me. Everything seems to be fine. And then there is a belt there that's also turning. Doesn't seem to be slipping. Doesn't seem too loose. Doesn't seem like it's deteriorating. I think those belts are fine and it's moving fine. So that leaves, could the motor be running at the wrong speed? Hmm, right? So if you look, there's the motor. See the two wires, red and black? They run over here to this board. Okay, now if you look at the back of this board, where they connect, they just immediately run over to that ribbon cable. And they are the two right wires on this ribbon cable. The two left wires on this ribbon cable are these two, which is going to be the pickup head for the tape player, I'll bet, or something like that. So those two wires also run to the ribbon cable, but the, the black and the red, you know, surely would be what we're concerned with if we're thinking that the speed isn't right of the tape of the uh, motor. And so it runs to this ribbon cable and it's these two right wires that come over here. And look what's right above that. There is a voltage, a VR901 
All right. So there's a potentiometer right there. So that's going to change the voltage going to the motor. I wonder if that's dirty, it looks dirty, and the voltage has lowered, or these caps or something has caused the voltage to lower, and that's why it's running slower, and it's why it sounds bad. That would be my guess. So this wire here is the one that I unplugged. It goes over to the AC and the batteries. So, see the ribbon cable right there? See those two? That's those two pins there. And if we follow those around, one of them goes to here, which uh, jumps up into this mess. And one of them wraps around to here, which jumps over into this mess. And that voltage regulator is right there. And it's adjustable from the back. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put this sucker back together <laughs> and then I'm going to attempt to measure the voltage uh, while it's playing, while it's turned on. And then I'm going to play a tape and see if the voltage changes and we'll see if the voltage seems anything like however many batteries we're supposed to have in it. Nine. I don't know. One, two, three, four. So six volts. So let's see if the motor will run on six volts. I mean, it should be. It'll work with batteries that are only six volts. So four batteries. So uh, if we check that and it's like four volts or something, that might be our whole problem. And we can also turn it while it's playing a tape and see if it changes it. So that's my plan. We're trying to save this beautiful piece of Chineseum that I'm going to try to make $10 off of. Was recalling his All right, look at this crap. Medal of Honor recipient. The former president said it was a young man from the West Coast who had promised his mother that he was going into the service to help people, not to kill them. Mick knew Truman was talking about his dad, but Bob did nothing. 1.72 volts. Come on now. Not there ain't no way in hell that thing's designed to work on 1.72 volts. We're going to hit it. I'm going to hit it. I'm going to do it. Here we go. We're going to make it happen. Let's see if we can speed him up. For them, he says, responsibility was their juice. They loved responsibility. It may kick in because it may just be that pot's dirty. And any time they could get a task and be responsible, that was what really got them going. Nonetheless, Rick struggled for a time as a teenager when he mm. realized what he'd have to live up to with Bob as a father. It doesn't he have it. They can't do it. They clashed over lifestyle and values for a while. But he always tried to understand what his father had been through in the Depression and the war. That's as all I got. It, I try to assimilate his value. That's the problem, though, and right? I also try to show him the difference. Bob has another way of describing it. Not quite there. Rick, he says. Let's see what that got it to. I'm a Volkswagen. Now that the children are in their 40s... Oh, please don't bite me, Mr. Electricity. Bob and Wanda are in their 70s. They have a new Bush generation as common ground. Bob 1.83. I don't know what that motor's supposed to run on, but there ain't. The success of a grand Two volts, come on. From Pepperdine College Let's see what the voltage is coming in. high-paying job with a Fortune 500 company. Or another granddaughter, a star Twelve. basketball player, who's also going to Pepperdine huh. on a scholarship from the Medal of Honor Society, hmm. an organization made up of all living recipients of the coveted decoration. I gotta figure out what that voltage is supposed to be. All right, folks, so here is that little circuit. So I looked up what voltage does a cassette tape recorder a cassette tape motor run on and there's all kinds of different ones but guess what there's some called micro motors or something like that 
minis or mini motors or something that want three volts and this thing is putting out 1.6 volts i'll bet that's what it's trying to do okay so it appears that when the voltage comes in here 12 volts it runs to this cap and then runs off okay now it looks like a voltage regulator down there to me that's probably what runs the cd player and the uh, radio, which I can see over on this other side, I can see the AM antenna and everything. So this voltage regulator appears to only be for that motor. So that's probably exactly what the deal is. It, uh, I think, although I haven't confirmed it yet, let's see here. It kind of even looks like you may be able to adjust that voltage from the outside of the of the cabinet of the case by turning that knob okay so uh, there is a little chip here that says utc 6650 so i'm going to look at chip up and see what the voltage in and out is supposed to be i'll bet that chip is something that creates the that is what is actually changing the voltage or whatever they probably have something set up where as the battery voltage lowers this keeps the voltage at the same speed according to that pot so that it runs the correct tape volt i mean the correct tape speed that's my guess but all this looks fine i mean we got like four caps here four five Six, maybe, maybe those go with it. Nine, maybe nine resistors. There's a little ceramic disc cap. Um, that potentiometer, which looks filthy, by the way, but it did work. You saw when I was turning it. Uh, and then a couple transistors. One of these transistors might be bad. There's also a diode here. So I don't know that I'm going to have any of this stuff to fix this. But we'll, uh, if I can test the voltage going into this chip, and the voltage coming out, that should tell me where the problem is, hopefully. So I'm going to look up the schematics on that chip. 6650, UTC 6650. Well, sure as you're born, look at this. It's a motor speed control circuit. Mm, mm, mm. Man, that must be what Michael Jordan feels like. Okay, description. This chip is a monolithic integrated circuit designed for the tape recorder. Okay, well, there we go. Wide operating supply voltage, 1.8 to 7. Hmm. Few external components, easy speed control mode. There's a block diagram of the inside. Here's its little uh, characteristics. Some of this I will understand. Some of this I will not. See, like, this is what I don't get. Output voltage characteristics. It says test conditions. 1.8 to 7. But then over here it says minimum, negative 1.2. Typical, 0.1. Maximum, 1.2. So I don't, I don't get that. It says right here, 1.8 to 7, but here it says negative 1.2 to 1.2. I don't know. Something doesn't make sense to me. We'll figure it out. Maybe. Look, folks, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this thing. I've already spent too long. I'm losing money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working hard for this $10. I can't... I'm probably not going to be able to fix it anyway because I don't have any of these parts. I've got some caps. Now, this says application circuit i wonder how close to this application they actually did it i mean if it's dead on this yeah we ought to be able to figure it out okay so uh i'm going to try to measure the input voltage Something horrible happened in the closet. I don't want to even know. Okay, uh, input voltage. VCC, that would be input voltage. 
So it looks like ground is five and six and the input voltage would be three. Now let's see if that's what they show on this. Yeah. See, VCC, three. Where is our potentiometer? There it is. Look, it's between pin one and pin four. Okay, so let's see how close that is to this little diagram. If they did it exactly like that, I might be able to fix it. All right. I have measured it did some stuff, and everything seems about right except for this one. See how this says 510 ohm? When I measure it, I'm getting 900 ohm. I, at first, I was thinking, well, this schematic just must be different. Everything seems about right except for that one. I'm getting 900 ohm. So guess what? I took a little jumper, <laughs> and I went like this. And Tom Brokaw got real fast. So my theory is, if that was a 500 ohm still, I'll bet Tom Brokaw would sound just right. So I'm going to replace this resistor with a smaller resistor, and hopefully that'll fix it. So I'm going to try to get to 510 or 470 or something like that. I don't, I think I've got a bunch of resistors. Let me see if I can find anything close to that. So I've got some parts boards. Now I don't want to take parts off of these permanently, but I don't have any loose uh, resistors. So I'll order some just so I've got some. I thought I had some, but I don't. But I got a bunch of little boards. These are for N Nintendo Sanyo monitors. And this is a board off of a Wells Garner 4600. <laughs> so I need yellow, purple, brown. Would be 470 ohms. And it looks like yellow, purple, brown. So I gotta be honest, with you, I can't even tell what color that is. I think it's yellow, black, I mean, it's white, black, red. So that was never, well, it's supposed to be a 510 according to this, but we don't, we have no clue, right? That's the one that was in there. So let me look up that, let me look up white, black, red and measure it and see if it's anywhere near that. Well, I've got that all completely backwards. Okay, so yes, this one is different. But if I short across this one, it actually slows down. This one is correct, 9.1K. If I short this out to where it's gone, it gets really fast. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm going to do the same thing I was thinking. But uh, instead of 9K, I'm going to do like 4.7K. But that's probably the correct one. That's like a 9K resistor there. Uh, hmm. Whatever. I don't care. I'm changing this. I'm changing. I don't have the schematics of this actual radio. So this fixes it. That's what we're going to do, right? So I'm going to lower this resistor, which should fix it. I don't know. If it fixes it, it fixes it. If it, fit, if it fits, it ships, right? <laughs> so let me see if I can find something like a 4.7K and put it in there and see if that gets it going. Well, I broke something. It didn't happen. <laughs> um... I think I've about fixed the tape speed. Listen really close. Uh, because I, you know, I, I, I tacked a 8K resistor on and that slowed the tape, that sped the tape speed up a little bit. Sounds pretty good, but all my amplification's gone. And if you look on the front, the display isn't working. So like the whole thing is dead. If I turn it on radio or on CD, nothing happens. It just turns off the, um, well, it doesn't turn off the tape player, but I think it's designed that way. So basically whatever CPU runs all of this, I have fried or something. I checked the voltage regulator down here and it's still making its five volts. So, I don't know. I think we're in over my head. We've still got the voltage coming in. We've still got the 5 volts. So, it looks like that same 12 volts goes up here, what we've been messing with, and creates the uh, just the voltage that runs the tape player. 
So that's still working. And it's at just the right speed where although it's not amplified, you can hear that <laughs> it's about the right speed. So I guess I fixed the tape player. But while I was doing it, I broke the rest of it. So unfortunately, the answer to the question, should I just throw this in the trash, is... Yeah, yeah, I think I'm just going to have to throw it in the trash. So, there you go. <laughs> uh, so, there you go. So, I don't know what I did. I probably got one of these screws touching something and shorted something out. But if it's one of these surface... I would never be able to identify it. But if it's one of these surface chips, I wouldn't be able to replace them anyway. And, um, yeah, so that's that. So I, I'll know in the future if it's a Chinese one that's acting up, don't even try to fix it. You're not going to be able to pull it off. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the video anyway. Uh, I'll make sure to put the title. I'll put fail in the title so everybody knows that I don't fix it because I don't want people to be disappointed when they get to the end and it, it doesn't happen like it ought to. But, you know, that's kind of how it goes when you work on things. You fix some, and you can't fix some. So, I'll save the guy's tape. I don't really want to even listen to the tape. Um, you know what I'll do? I'll save the guy's other three radios. <laughs> I don't think I want to listen to a Tom Brokaw tape about the Bush family. I just, I'm not interested in that at all. Uh, so... Uh, I think I'm going to get rid of it. So there you go, folks. So leave your comments below. Have you fixed this before? What was the actual problem over here? Because the changing the resistor is kind of just a hack around it. You know what I mean? That wasn't what the actual problem was, but I couldn't figure out what the deal was. Everything seemed in spec. It could have been one of those two caps, but they're ceramics. You'd think they'd be all right. So leave your comments down below if you've worked on anything like this before. Um... I don't know if I'll take a shot at one of these again or not in the future, but at least uh, at least I gave it a shot before I threw it away. <laughs> I hate to throw a, a, a working radio and a working CD player away, but they're not working anymore, so I guess I might as well. So leave your comments below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up. I'm just trying to have fun on the weekend. You know, Maybe I'll learn something. I did learn a lot. I learned that that's how tape players work. They have a separate little thing that controls the speed. So, you know, at least there's that. And I, like I said, I sold the other little radio uh, for like 10 bucks that was almost identical to this one. So, you know, I got my money back at least, and I learned a little bit, so I guess it's not a complete loss. So we'll see you on the next video. We'll be back a Tuesday with uh, another, another episode of our... Uh, shipmates pinball machine and i think we're going to run those kind of fast because we've got several of them and whenever we do the ems people get kind of bored if i drag it out you know so there's a ton of work on them so it ends up being a ton of videos but if i if i uh if i put up a video and then wait a few days to put up another video it takes three or four weeks to fix one game and once people have seen the, the game in the first couple videos they kind of drop off to where they don't watch as much towards the end so I may run those back to back to back to, to get through them and get back over to uh, working on something else. We've got a whole bunch of stuff that we're working on right now. So I will see you on the next video. We appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, I'm going to put fail in the title so uh, people will know ahead of time that uh, we didn't actually get the thing fixed. <laughs> so look, my clock that I fixed the other week, it works, but the hand slips. It's not too... 10 till 2. If you look, the hand wouldn't even be like that if it was almost 3 o'clock. It's almost 1 o'clock. It's still late, but it's almost 1 o'clock. But the hand doesn't fit right. If you if you watch whenever I messed with that, there was a little plastic hour snail on it. And that, sna that little plastic thing is all screwed up. But it looks like I can replace that with a metal one from one of their other models. So I might do a video on that down the line. But I only wanted to work on this so I could get rid of it or sell it. So, unfortunately, I had to throw it away. So, you know, back in the day, people probably threw these other ones away. That's probably, there was probably some guy sitting in Rock Hill 
you know, back in the back in the eighties, and he couldn't fix this thing, so he threw the thing in the trash. Right? <laughs> this one's a lot simpler though. I ought to be able to fix that if it's messed up. I bet it still works. So uh, China strikes again. I don't. I don't necessarily think this is a a, a badly built little little um, radio though. It seems actually pretty good, but it's just it's so modern that it's to the point where. I don't completely understand the circuits that are going on and things. So we analyzed the one little tape speed circuit and I, I almost understood it, but, um, yeah, a little too complex for me. I think I'll go back to my oldies. So I hope you enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you and we'll see you back on Tuesday. Have a good night.